I am camped in the most beautiful spot. I'm 20 minutes from a town. I'm a mile from a highway. There's not another person near me and the cell signal is killer. Today, I'm going to tell you guys my simple three-step system that I use myself to find boondocking like this all the time. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am doing great. I am in the most amazing boondocking spot on public land that is totally free. Now, when I shot this video, this place didn't show up on any of the camping apps that a lot of us use. Now, let me give you a recent example of why I don't depend just on the camping apps. This is a spot I was in recently in Yuma, Arizona with friends that you could see is really crowded. Well, my friends were at the same spot last year and there were two people, but somebody thought it was BLM land and put it on one of the camping apps and then it got really crowded and it turns out it wasn't BLM land at all. It was land that a local quarry owner allowed people to stay on. But you can see here, some jack wagon started a fire, so I bet that's going to be over soon. So if you depend just on the camping apps, you can't even be sure that you're on public land. And you certainly won't find hidden gems like the one I'm in right now. So today, I'm going to go through my easy three-step system for finding boondocking that is totally legal and free where you can be alone, get a cell signal, and know that the road is good almost every time. Whew. And I have to tell you guys, I am in Arizona and it is getting hot today, so I'm going to film the rest of this at night at my desk while I go through all of the screenshots I've made for you. Now, if you follow my channel for a while, you know that I've been a full-time boondocker for over six years. I do that because it keeps my cost of living down and allows me to work remotely from beautiful places. If you need a remote job, don't forget to check out my book, Work From Home While You Roam. The link is below. While we enjoy sunrise from my dash cam in the Kofa Wildlife Reserve, which is where I was camping, let me give you a quick overview of what public land is and who manages it. Now you can see on the left, here's a map of the U.S. and all those colored areas are public land which can be used for recreation. But if you look on the right, there are a bunch of different agencies that manage those different places where we can camp. Now most of that is U.S. Forest Service, 193 million acres, Bureau of Land Management, 248, Fish and Wildlife, 150, and the National Park Service. And as you can see here, most of that public land is on the West Coast. Sorry, East Coast people. But look, 95% of Alaska, 87% of Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Oregon, those are the states where you're going to find the most free public camping. Now, if you go to one of the big sites like the USFS or BLN, you'll see the rules for dispersed camping or what we call boondocking. You can see here that usually you can camp for 14 days consecutively, but you also have to be responsible to bring in your own water, power, and take out your own trash and leave it the way that you found it. Now you could go directly to the BLM website, which is pretty good. You can find spots there and they have some pretty good interactive maps. But those maps are not going to tell you about the cell signal or the roads. And you could go to the U.S. Forest Service website, which is the next big one, but save yourself the trouble because you can find stuff, but it's difficult and hard to read. And that's why most of us end up using the camping apps. But if you just use the camping apps, you're going to miss a bunch of locations also, which brings me to my three-step system, which I'm going to tell you about now. But wait until the end because I'm going to give you a couple of additional resources that you probably don't know about. Now, I literally discovered Kotha while I was driving from Quartzsite to Yuma, and so I tried to put this road on Campendium that I thought might have camping, and you could see here that it said there were no results where I was looking. Now, you can see that Kotha is managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Division, but if you go to their website, it was completely useless. If you go into camping, they tell you to go to reserve.gov, which doesn't have sites in Kofa for you to reserve. So if you just depended on that, you would completely miss out. So here's the first step in my easy process. If I know where I'm going, like I did this time, 
I find nearby camping on one of the apps. Like you can see here on Campendium, I found some camping on nearby King Road. But listen, that was in Quartzsite and the pen took me directly to a bunch of circles in the ground. When you see that on satellite view, that means that there are off-road people there and it's dusty and they're noisy and that's not where I wanna camp, so I keep looking. Then I went over to check out iOverlander, but when I put in Kofa, someplace in Saudi Arabia came up. You cannot make this stuff up. I had to search for a while and look for wild camping to find a review also though on nearby King Road. And when I clicked that link that was on iOverlander, the pen literally took me to a wash. Do not camp in washes. You can see that on satellite view because it's between a row of trees. That is not a road and flood danger in Arizona is real. So why is step one in my process looking at the apps if they're frequently wrong? Because they will give me nearby information on the cell signal, what the vibe of the area is, and also how the roads are. Like this one here on iOverlander that says that the roads were impassable. Now I don't wanna camp where those other people camped, but I know there's camping nearby in Kofa. So the next step is that I go over to Google and I search for the area I'm going to, and this is the important part. Then I click images, because what I'm looking for is a map of the area that tells me where the public land begins and ends so I know I can go anywhere there to camp for free for 14 days. Now I know there's camping in the area and I know what the cell signal is like and have some recent reviews about the roads. Then what I do is I go back to the app and I copy and paste the location that was put on the app and then zoom in on satellite view. Like you can see here on King Road, there were a bunch of circles around, meaning there were a bunch of people. But what I look for are grid lines for roads or veins where there is camping. Now you could have seen a second ago in what I was just looking at that I saw a bunch of power lines. You do absolutely want to look for power lines or gas lines if you're on BLM land in the desert. And if you're camping in the national forest, what you wanna look for is national forest roads because these public agencies create those roads so that they can manage the resources in those locations and those roads are the things that take us to camping. Okay, back to Kofa where I'm gonna show you my third step in the process. Now I know what the parameters of Kofa are. I know what the cell signal and roads are like from nearby campers. But now I zoom in on satellite. I've already found another road called Palm Canyon, and I can see that there are people there, but less people. And what I'm looking for is an offshoot from the main road that looks like it's easy to get to. Sometimes when you get out to the public land, you find there's a berm there or something where the area you thought you could camp in isn't that easy to get to. So what I do before I go is I zoom in and I pin two, three, four locations that I think will be good for camping. I get there early in the morning, I find the best one, and I set up camp. Now that three-step system has worked for me over and over, especially if I know where I'm going. But what if I don't? Let me give you my favorite new resource for searching for public land by region. It's called publiclands.org but they only show you camping for BLM and the National Forest because they're also the people that do the maps for those agencies. So with publiclands.org, you can actually zoom in anywhere in the country and see what camping is available and go right to a map online that shows you all of the service roads so you can find camping anywhere if it's USFS and BLM that's not on any of the camping apps. And here are two more additional resources that I recommend. I use them every time. First of all, I always have a backup. When I'm going to boondock on public land, my favorite one for last minute trips is Trucker Path. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I've mentioned this before. This is a free app for truck drivers that tells them nearby truck stops, rest areas, and more, and it tells you how many people are there and how many spots they have. And the other thing is that I always share my location 
with friends and family so they can see where I am or see where I last had a sell signal. If you don't do anything else that I recommend in my videos, please do this. Here's an example of how it works on Google Maps, but all kinds of different apps and software do this. Just make sure that you're safe and you're protected and the people that love you know where you are. I hope you guys found this helpful. You do not have to go where other people go. You don't have to always stay in an RV park. A good portion of this country is set aside for us to do exactly what I'm doing here. And the process of finding a spot that you'll love doesn't have to be daunting. If you do something that I haven't mentioned here or you have a comment, please do put it in the comments below. Share this with your friends if you think that they can use it. You can stay in places just like this. I'll see you guys next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.